For those of you interested, we're gonna do a food plot progress update at the end of the video. Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today, I wanna to tell you all about why I chose to work with Summit Tractors. My own take on it, right? Nobody else, just my own reasons. I have my own reasons for doing so. I got 10 of them, actually. I'm gonna go through those all really quickly, try to give you my own take on it, right? Because this was a business decision for me, right? It's just a part of my business. It's not the whole business. It's just like bringing on a new product line. And well, I've recently kind of stepped back from selling used tractors for the most part. And, and this is kind of a natural fit. And this is something that I wanted to get into, not necessarily with Summit, but just kind of in the new tractor lineup in a way for a long time. And the way that this worked out is it just made a lot of sense. So I'm gonna get into that now and explain those reasons. Again, I got 10 reasons. So the first one, and these are in no particular order, these are just kind of whatever. The first one is based on the first conversation that I had with Doug when he reached out to me and said, hey, I got an idea for you. I have a new tractor brand. I wanna to talk to you about it. I wanna discuss it with you. So that initial conversation kind of opened my mind to the idea that, that this could really have some merit. This could really be going somewhere and be something I wanna be involved with, not without trepidation, right? not without validation, but it started things off on the right foot. And that was with just Doug's general demeanor, his knowledge, his industry experience, his lifetime, well, his lifetime's work, essentially. You know, this is the culmination of it. He's taking everything that he's done in his entire career that's been devoted to the tractor industry and moving it into the Summit brand. And that means all of the knowledge you know, with the product, with the different vendors that are out there, not just with tractor bands themselves, but with attachments, with dealer networks, with distribution, with marketing, with every facet of it that goes on the back end of a company, he's been involved with that. And this isn't his first rodeo. He's done this before. He's told you that he's worked with Royal King. He's worked with Agco. He's worked with CNH. He's worked with all these companies and he knows how this process goes. And so selfishly, I see that and I think about myself when I had to build my own company in the tractor world and learn all those mistakes the hard way, right? They're very costly going through them the first time. So Doug's already gone through that experience. He's gone through that over and over. So he's had those, all those trials and those tribulations to go through and learn from and have experience with so he knows how to better execute this time around. And so I could go on and on about that and deep dive more, but essentially what I want you to take away from that is that I, I take this whole process very seriously myself and I, I do this with all my equipment, right? So whether it's good or bad or anything else, I still, even before I put it on, on YouTube and, and market it on my, on my website and everything else, I wanna make sure it's a sound piece of equipment. And so that's kind of the underlying basis of this video is to give you that reassurance that that's where this decision to include Summit on my channel is coming from. So number two, Okay, in these earlier conversations that we had, it was obvious that the way that they want a tractor to be equipped right out of the gate is how I envision and how I've, I've made videos complaining about with other brands, those things that are missing from tractors and that you don't know about, regrets when you buy a tractor because your dealer or your salesman didn't tell you about it. And all sorts of these features do come standard, you know, with the self-leveling loader, with the front remote, the rear remote, ballast in the rear tires, an upgraded tire, you know, there's a lot of things that you get that are included in the purchase price and the basic price. They're not upgrades, they're not hidden charges, they're not anything else. And of course, at the end of the day, a price always has to account for that. And, and whether you wanna call them free or not, you're still just seeing the price and that's what it is. You don't have to pay extra for it. And so that approach right there, for me, lines up with what I've discussed as a problem with other dealers and other brands in the past. And so that alignment is a more natural fit for me and what I expect as a consumer not just some kind of a dealer that sells things as well. Which takes me to number three, which is actually how this tractor is sold, all right? And I am not going to be selling these tractors. I wanna make that clear. This is gonna be sold in a completely different format. You're not gonna have like a John Deere dealership or a Kubota dealership or a Massey. You're not gonna walk into a dealership like that. And I know that you may think that's strange, right? But there's a whole other world out there and there's a whole different way of buying anything now, whether it's a car or a tractor or paper towel, right? You can buy it online, you can buy it wherever you want. And so the idea here is to make it easy to buy and not feel like it's, well, just strange. You know, I've gone into so many different locations. It doesn't have to be a tractor dealership. It can be anywhere. And you, you feel awkward going in there and either trying to get somebody to help you or feeling like they're, it's a high pressure sale. And so this is essentially gonna be a sales model where 
the tractor is sitting there. For you to look at at your leisure, it's not high pressure, right? These these sales guys, while they may not know everything about the tractor sitting there, that's where the the backside comes into play. The website, the forum, these videos, so you can get all that information and have a really well-rounded perspective. We don't even have a retail storefront at Goodworks Tractors, right? And, and our business is completely online. So we showcase our equipment in videos, whether it's a tiller or a snow pusher or a grapple, whatever it is. And it's the same concept with Summit. They wanna sell product differently in a way that many consumers relate to now. And so you can go into that retailer there, you can take a look at it, be comfortable, go home, come back, take a look at it again, not feel any pressure. You can scan in a, a QR code, apply for your financing right there in the store, you can get the attachments you want. You can go through that whole checkout process without having to feel funny about it, right? I sell used tractors, I've sold them all over the country. Folks buy them sight unseen, they just go to my website, they give me a call, they shoot me an email, they pay for it and we ship it out to them, right? So it's that same kind of concept, except this is with a brand new tractor, which is pretty darn cool. And so my immediate downside to that sales model was the fact that, well, how the heck is this gonna be serviced then if there's no dealerships around, right? But there's small equipment repair shops all over the country. There's other tractor dealerships all over the country that service all kinds of equipment, right? And so they already do this. They already work on other brands. They service them all the time. And it's the same concept for Summit, except Summit has a complete training course included so that when they onboard new technicians, new servicing dealers around the country, they have a lot more control over that process and how it's treated and how customers are taken care of. And so you don't need a Summit branded dealership over here to be able to take your tractor specifically to. They're gonna have technicians that are already at existing dealers and infrastructure that's already in place nationwide that they've taken on board and trained to work on their equipment. I think that's a really smart way of doing business. The next reason is the fact that this is not a completely brand new tractor, right? It's, it's taking existing technology that's already out there. It's based on another tractor. ITL already makes tractors, right? They're taking something that's out there, they're tweaking it, they're packaging it to make it unique to Summit, but that is part of, a huge part of why I was comfortable even showcasing this on my channels because it's not built from scratch from the ground up where you're sure to have all sorts of problems. This tractor model has already been proven out. And so for me, having all of that experience, you know, the Mitsubishi engine, the ITL frame, and then just tweaking all the extras all those smaller components that come along with it to me is very reassuring because this is this is proven in the market already. This is not, well, what's gonna happen to it? How's it gonna work? How long is it gonna last, right? It's already there, it's been there for a long time over in Europe. And so that really lessens the risk overall for the consumer, for Summit, who's involved with it, and the parts are available, they've been around forever. And so just all around, it lowers that risk factor. It makes me feel more comfortable as both somebody representing this company as well as a potential consumer. I guess I didn't have to hose it off, huh? Woo. Folks, I am loving this. It just started downpouring while we were shooting video. This is the third day in a row of rain right after I planted my food plots. I am like, I'm super happy right now. This is, I couldn't ask for <laughs> anything better. These are the kinds of rains that get a crop started just perfectly. It's August, what was it the fifth today? August 5th today, I planted on the 3rd, right? Well, yeah, Well, I, it, it rained two hours after I planted, then the next day, and now the third day. I, this is great. Hey, wanted to give you guys a quick update on the status of the food plots and the screen that we have. So it's August 12th today, and the last time we did an update for you, I don't know, it was a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago, and it was way down here. This was the average height, was down in the middle of my shin, and so it is like doubled in height in the last week or 10 days, wherever it is. August 12th, again, this is a screen that I'm putting in for the food plot. Um, still sparse in some areas. I did broadcast some extra in there and actually drilled a little bit that was left over too. So we'll see if it thickens up or not, but um, it's impressive stuff. It's cool to see how fast it grows. And this was a, oh, a, a mid-July-ish planting, somewhere right around there, kind of around the, the 10th to 15th of July, I think it was, uh, late in the season to plant it. We're gonna be an update sometime soon out at Richland, our other property. Uh, that stuff is is like up here. Last time I was out there, there was some that was already over my head, so by the time we get back out there, I'm, I'm expecting good things. But um, really good cover screening material here. Uh, no food, this isn't corn, it's not sorghum, so there's nothing for the animals that wanna come in and kind of trample and knock it all down. It's meant just to be a screen. So let's give you an update on the plot too. This got planted about nine days ago and see how that's looking. 
All right, so here we are in the plot, and again, this is about an acre, and we did strips, all right? We did about um, the south third running east to west is just the cereal grains, uh, winter wheat, winter rye, oats, and peas. And then this middle section here, we still integrated all those grains into it, but then um, kind of treated that like a cover. That'll all die off, and then we've got a lot of clover in here, and everything's sprouting up. We had really good germination, um, and in fact, just a, a few days after we planted, it was already sprouted. We had rain two hours after I planted, and then I think it was six out of seven days in a row it rained in some amounts that that timing couldn't have been better. And then on the far side, on the north third, uh, we still used, the, again, those kind of the same cereal grains. Uh, it's, it's really hard. The brassicas that we have all in there um, are a really small seed. Uh, same thing with the clovers, a really small seed, and you don't plant a lot per acre um, or per portion of acre. So it helps to mix that in with something else to kind of get your rate a little bit better. And that's coming in really good too. So really good germination right now on everything across the board. Um, and again, that rain made all the difference in the world. You know, sometimes you can have just a huge dry spell and it's just gonna sit there, nothing's gonna happen. Um, but so far, so good. Just nine days after planting. So anyways, back on track. So let me get my notes. I wrote all this stuff down. Oh yeah, so that's the next, the next one. I don't know what point we're on, but talking about product improvement, all right? And um, I like to show Shark Tank. And so this is kinda, you hear this a lot on there and it's the saying, go something like, perfection is the enemy of good, right? And I had questions for them about when they're gonna have this improvement, that improvement, the other improvement, right? When they're gonna be implementing those. And they have plans to do that. They're, they have more plans than just what I asked about to constantly improve the product, you know, bring a full cab to the market, do a bigger, a bigger chassis size with a bigger engine, all that kind of stuff. And that kind of stuff is always coming. And it's the same thing that you can get trapped in, like me, my own products that I, that I put out, that I design and, and take into market. And it's very true is that you can sit around there and wait forever to think you get your product exactly perfect and then wait. There's just one more thing you can make and it delays it even further, right? But as long as the product is, is polished, right? As long as it's a very good product, it's executing the way that you need it to, it's checking all those boxes. If there's little things that you can tweak here and there down the road and improve, go for it. But don't wait to take it to market because it's, this tractor here beats the snot out of most of the other tractors that are on the market just at face value. So it's a very good tractor. I like that their mindset is where it's at, is that it's ready to launch now, but we're not stopping there. We're gonna keep improving it, keep fine tuning it, keep building out our line the way that we want to down the road. Yeah. All right, so next was in fact how they're handling their launch to market, right? And we've had a lot of interest. We've been a lot of interest, a lot of emails, a lot of comments, a lot of calls to me, to summon directly on where the heck can I buy the tractor, right? And so it's a really good problem to have is, is folks wanting to buy something. That's a really good thing. And right now they are just temporarily just in Texas and Oklahoma because that's where they're doing kind of their, their soft launch, so to speak. And you may have heard that in, in other industries as well and with other product lines too, but instead of just, hey, full bore going at it nationwide where you have all of these different retailers and, and technicians and logistics, all that kind of stuff to onboard, they're starting small and just kind of, well, if there is a hiccup that comes up in a process, you know, whether it's at a retailer or, or with, you know, a, something with communication and technician or what the heck it is, it doesn't matter, but they can, they can prove that process out and fine tune it before going nationwide. And that's a really smart way to go about it. And I do get, it's frustrating, right? You, you see a new product, you want to go buy it right away. And why the heck aren't they in my area? And I, and I totally get that, but that's a temporary situation. It's not going to be like that long-term. You're, you're soon going to be able to buy that nationwide, wherever you want to. And so it's just pretty cool. You know, you can complain about not having any interest in a product, right? Or you can, you know, have complaints about there being a lot of interest and not being able to get it. So I guess if you're gonna, you know, pick one or the other, this is a good one to have. And, and like I say, it's a temporary situation. Soon enough, you're gonna be able to get this at mass retail. Summit will be filling their website. You can go on there and see dealer locators and technician locators and all that kind of stuff. They will build that out as soon as the time is ready. It's coming soon, I promise. Okay, so yeah, this tractor is made by ITL. That's an Indian company. They are roughly, I think it's 30% owned right around there. You'll see it on Summit's website, but I think it's around 30% owned or influenced by, by Yanmar, okay? And so they have a lot of influence with Yanmar, which is a really big deal as well. Um, but yeah, this is an Indian company. And well, if we look at my 1025R, you're gonna see it's a Chinese loader bracket that's on there. You're gonna see other parts stamped with 
made in Mexico, other parts that are from foreign countries as well. And so there's a lot of assembly that's done here in the U.S. There's no bones about that. But Summit is trying to bring in as much as they can and whenever it's possible to include U.S. made products. And so AmeriQuip is going to make the backhoe for them. Uh, the tires, the wheels are from Titan Goodyear. Those are an American made company. A lot of their attachments that they're going to have building out this product line are made in America too. And of course, they're still supporting a lot of USA jobs with um, not just the retailers, but at all the distribution hubs where all these tractors come into the States and are assembled to put together and shipped out, right? Those are still American jobs that are doing this kind of labor. And while I am all for, everybody's all for made in America, right? Nobody's like, I don't want made in America, but there's real cost prohibition to that process to having something, especially as complex as a tractor or a truck or an airplane, any of those kinds of things that have these huge, large amounts of components in them, to have it all sourced in the US is, well, nobody would ever buy that. Nobody could afford it because the cost of that finished good would be so astronomically high that it would price everybody out of the market. And I've found that out the hard way on some of my own products that I've tried to develop. I had a great idea. I wanted to make a ballast box. I wanted to make a made in the USA ballast box. Just a simple product, just a steel box that's welded up. USA steel, USA fabrication, put some extra side boxes on the side of it so you can have extra weight if you want to. Take this extra side box, put it on the other side so you can have more ballast weight off to a side if you want to. Sounds amazing, right? But the cost is like triple what you can get one of those Titan ballast boxes for that are made overseas and get it shipped to you and everything else. Nobody's gonna pay triple the cost for that. It's just not in the realm of reality. And so imagine that kind of example translating to a tractor and how expensive that could be. Next, I have the freedom to tell it like it is, right? And so, Doug, Daniel, they'd watch my channel, they know what I'm all about. And uh, I generally don't sugarcoat things that well. I just kind of tell you if I like it or if I don't like it, what's good and bad. Sometimes I inject my opinion, I try to let you know it's my opinion, but lots of times I want to keep it objective and let you know. And you know, it's not like, I just did a video about all the John Deere stuff that I have and all the problems that I have with John Deere, right? But it's not like I, I completely knock John Deere. I still have all this John Deere equipment and I still like all the John Deere equipment except for the Gator. I think it's a terrible piece of equipment. But it doesn't mean that the Summit's not gonna have any problems. You know, these machines, they all have problems, right? And so I expect there to be a problem at some point and I don't know, we'll see what it is. I have no idea what's gonna happen, right? But there's probably gonna be something that goes wrong with it at some point down the line, just like every other piece of machinery I've ever had in my whole life has had something go wrong with it. So it doesn't mean I'm not recommending something just because it has a problem. But if it doesn't perform, that'd be a big issue. And so I want to, well, that's why I'm starting to rack up all these hours on the Summit Tractor now. We just got it, we've got, I think, 18 hours on it. So we'll keep putting more time on it. Um, but I wanna let you guys know what it's about. I wanna put that in videos and just kind of give you the good, the bad, what size attachment it works with, what size attachment it doesn't work with. Summit's got a list right on their website that gives recommendations on what it works with. I kind of want to push those limits a bit and see if I can get, get lucky and maybe use some larger stuff um, above what it's rated for, but we'll find out and see how that goes. You know, and lastly, and this is kind of selfish, to be perfectly honest, this is kind of selfish, it's actually nice to be appreciated. <laughs> so, you know, for years, years and years and years, I've done a, just a boatload of John Deere videos. I don't get paid by John Deere. And in fact, I've heard from John Deere corporate two times. And both of those times were from their legal department to tell me how to change wording on my website to make sure that it didn't look like I was affiliated with John Deere because I guess how something was worded could have been misconstrued to think so. And then another way was to, to make sure that I knew that I could not resell um, demo or unsold equipment from Deere. So if Deere had leftover brand new tractors, they wanted to make sure I knew that I was not allowed to buy those tractors from the dealers and then resell them. I just wasn't allowed to do that. So those are my two interactions with John Deere after the hundreds of videos I've done featuring their equipment, giving them free advertising, is, is just from their legal department to tell me to whoa, whoa, step it back, buddy. So anyway, it feels good to have somebody actually see some value in what I do. and and. And I'm trying to run a successful business and, and promote my own products, right? But I'm also trying to just show the real world. And I, I show things that I screw up on a constant basis. And I don't get it, get it right all the time, and, and that's okay. I'm just learning as I go for like we all are, right? But um, that's the last thing there is, is it's, it's nice to have somebody reach out and see value in me. And you know, that's, that's part of the reason I chose to go with Summit along with all these other reasons. And I hope that paints a picture, you know, of 
of why I'm working with Summit, why I'm putting them on my channel, why I think that they have a lot of potential with their brand, with how they're gonna bring it to market, with how they're going to service it and take care of customers and build their own Summit Treasure community. And so this is just, this is just my take on it, right? This is my own, my own background, my own perception, my own, my own reasoning, all right? So anyway, there you have it, folks. And I gotta say, if you enjoy tractor videos, well, we have a lot of them on this channel, already out over 500 videos, another 500 to come. So I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below if you do wanna see more. And if you're looking for something for your tractor, it could be a John Deere, a Kubota, a Summit, a whatever, well, we can help you out with attachments to your front end loader or your three point hitch. Head on over to goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.